Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Keeping Goals. In today's episode, something slightly different. The last few vlogs I've taken you along on a match day vlog showing you how we've been getting on with my team, PTA IF in the league here in Sweden. But this week, something slightly different. Our next game isn't till Saturday, the day before you're probably watching this vlog. So in today's episode, I've brought you along to the pitch, as you can see, and I'm gonna show you one of my solo training sessions. You guys have seen in past episodes a lot of the distribution training that I do, but here at PTA, obviously slightly better facilities so I can change it up a bit and do slightly different drills to keep working on my distribution. So this morning, distribution session, I'll show you the drills that I'm doing, and then this afternoon, we'll have a catch up on football and I'll tell you how the league stands at this midpoint of the season. So seeing as we're in the middle of the season, we've played seven games, there are six games to go. My focus with these kind of solo sessions isn't so much for maximal gain and improvement, but as to maximize performance. I'm looking for accuracy, I'm looking for game realistic speed. I'm not chucking in loads and loads of reps on both feet as you've seen me do in off season distribution training. These sessions is more about sharpening skills ready for match day so that I can be as effective as possible. So first off in the session, I'll do a little bit of short passing using the board, two touch, three touch, one touch, both feet, making sure I can get my heart rate going and my touch nice and clean. And then I'll move into some longer distance stuff, left foot, right foot off the floor, and then a little bit of side volleys and half volleys for that longer distance accurate distribution. My focus is making sure that my first touch is good. That's the most important thing. If you're too busy worrying about the pass before you've even taken the touch, your touch will likely stitch you up and then you're in trouble. Concentrate on that first touch being out in front of you. As you can see, I was using right foot to touch across and play left foot, left foot to touch across and play right foot. Imagine being pressed by a striker. You want to take it into space and then play the pass. That's what I was trying to work on with those drills. Then with the pass itself, making sure it was firm, it was fast, match pace you don't want to be passing in nice and slow and then you get into a match and suddenly it's quick and you can't deal with the speed train at the speed that you want to play at as you can see it wasn't all perfect but that's why we practice now i'm going to move on to longer distance passing both off the floor and out my hands so we need to go and find a goal mm. so that i can kick it into oh that's amazing, that's maybe I might have to get pushing a goal now, Franks. I'm for this. I don't know. As if by magic, a goal appeared, Franks. Oh, we should have done the click. Yeah. There you go. Goal. So we've set the goal up where a fullback would be just before the halfway line within my own half. I'm gonna do off the floor, long drive passing into that target area. And then the same with side volleys, half volleys. Don't want to put in too many reps so that I can't kick on Saturday. That's the most important thing. We're just tuning it up. Working on the same concept as the short passing. So touch and then play into the target area. Imagine you're receiving a back pass from the left hand side of your box, taking a touch across your body into the space and then playing the longer pass out to your fullback. Across your body, you've got to make sure you time it. 
Otherwise it just spins out. Next, side volleys and half volleys. Frankie's gonna help me with these to make it as kind of game realistic as possible. She'll serve it in, I come and take it, and then I can hit the side volley. Why are you laughing at that? I'm kicking them in. Yeah. You're a super striker. I'm gonna give you my best shot. <laughs> Let's go. With the half volleys, I'm not aiming for the goal, I'm aiming for the channel. The half volley is kind of my longer distribution technique for beyond the back four. Imagine a winger running in beyond, that's what I'm trying to hit. finished playing to my right hand side from the far end so I come to the other end of the pitch span the goal round and I'm going to do exactly the same playing to the left hand side of the pitch symmetrical distribution that's what we're aiming for
So I hope you guys enjoyed coming along and seeing what I do for my distribution sessions, some of the solo sessions that I do in my training schedule at the moment. I know a lot of you guys have been asking to see team training and especially the goalkeeper training that I'm doing with Petia and I will show that on the channel hopefully very soon. But coming off the back of a defeat in our last game against Sheleftia, this week my focus has to be on making sure that I perform well in training, that everyone's focus is on the game on Saturday and I don't want to take away from that by bringing in the GoPro and trying to film the session and doing that kind of thing. My focus has to be fully on working, performing and being ready to give everything on Saturday to get us to bounce back with a win. As I mentioned when I was down at the pitch, my training schedule is slightly different in season compared to out of season. This off season just gone was obviously extremely unusual because of the coronavirus and having to train on my own the majority of the time. You guys saw in those videos how I structured my training program during those months. But right now in season, my training program roughly looks like one game per week, normally on the weekend. If that's the case, we will train as a team four times during the week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday afternoons. That's the core of the week, the main body of work that we do as a team, obviously to prepare to perform well in games. I then supplement that with my own individual training, covering different areas such as physical, technical, and mental training, as you guys know. So on top of those team training sessions, I would normally do Monday morning plyometric session, Tuesday morning morning gym session, Wednesday morning distribution session as you saw, Thursday morning gym session, Friday morning off, Saturday game and then Sunday morning recovery session in the gym. Put that all together into your seven day week and it can look like a lot of sessions but I have built up my body's capacity in the previous months, in the off season, to be able to handle that amount of training. Now, obviously, if we have two games in a week, for example, I'll adapt that training schedule to make sure I prioritize the games as opposed to the training, of course. And also, if I'm feeling tired or if I have any niggly injuries that I need to look after, I'll take out certain parts. The plyometric session and the distribution session are normally the ones that will be sacrificed if I need to. And then I'll supplement all that with regular meditation, visualization, game analysis, and mental training sessions throughout the week. It's taken me a few years to develop that schedule, to know what works best for me, to know what I need to work on week in, week out. Everyone will be different. You guys will be able to take some bits from that and leave other bits out. But if you can build up a program that helps you to perform your best on game day, that is the most important thing. And I've found in my career so far, that in order to do that, you might need to go beyond the set team training sessions that you have in a week. But back to business, game on Saturday, as I said, unfortunately, due to that loss against Sheleftia last Thursday, we have dropped down to third in the league. As you can see from the table, it is extremely tight at the top. There's probably six teams which still think they have a good chance of going on to win the division. We are obviously one of those teams and we need to bounce back straight away from that defeat by winning on Saturday with our game against Friska. We still have a lot of those top six teams still to play. We have the majority of the remaining games at home as well, but it's gonna be an exciting end to the season, that's for sure. We just have to take it one game at a time, starting on Saturday. You guys will get to see what happens in that game in next week's episode of Keeping Goals, next Sunday, 11 a.m., as always. If by any chance you would like bonus episodes of Keeping Goals, you're able to get them by becoming a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Connor O'Keefe. Patrons are now receiving Keeping Goals extra vlogs, behind the scenes exclusive content only for patrons. So if that's something that you might be interested in, make sure you sign up using the link below this video. And speaking of patrons, this week's patron of the week is Josh Stokes. Josh, thank you for your support. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without it. So here is your Keeping Goal shout out. Thank you for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's brought you some value. Wishes luck for Sunday. Gonna be a huge game. And as I say, you'll see everything that happens in the next episode of Keeping Goals. But have a great week. Keep chasing improvement as always. And I'll speak to you in a bit. Little beads just get in the house everywhere.